Burke writes, how nice is it to be 4-0, have our defense score just as much as our rival opponent did in the second half and save the game and still hear our fans say fire our defensive coordinator? <laughs> Look, it changed at halftime. Like, I admit it in the column I wrote after the game. My, my column that I wrote, I wrote half, I wrote probably 400 words at halftime ripping the defense. I mean, Clemson had the ball four times. They scored three of them. Um and it's like, are you going to keep doing this every week where you just look like you have no answers? Uh, but the second half, credit – and I remember somebody asked this last week, I think, like, what does Adam Fuller do well? And we said adjustments. He does do that well. I'd like them to start the games a little better, clearly. But they do figure out some stuff in in the games most of the time and do a good job of stopping whatever the offense is uh, killing them with. Yeah, and I don't know. You know, Pat Payton talked today about – the need to get off to better starts and you know sometimes players just say stuff so i'm not this isn't a knock on patrick payton or any you know but just sometimes players you know we're holding microphones in their faces they we ask them questions they got to come up with something to say so i don't know if this is really a thing or not but it is what he said he said that he said he feels like they need to not wait till they're down and actually play with that same energy and effort earlier i don't know if that's true or not but but hey, I mean, I don't at least they acknowledge it's an issue. You don't think yeah. energy and effort are an issue? I don't think anyway. No, no, it's never about yeah. the effort or the energy. They, they, they. It's a fair criticism to say they start slow, but it's not because they're not trying. And this so, one was yeah. different than the BC one. You didn't give him a lot of layups. Uh, he made some tough throws, and quite frankly, your corners didn't do a good job on plays they should defend. The one I really remember is Cyprus. It's a long out route all the way to the other side of the field on third down. And it's not even a good throw. It's kind of behind them. And Cyprus, need, that needs to be a pick six. Cyprus is too good a player to let that ball not only get by him, but get completed for a first down. I just don't think the corners played all that well to start that game. And then they obviously played better as the game went on. And Renardo continues to be a beast. Renardo's great, man. Renardo Nothing is just a great college yeah. football player. My favorite yeah, that play. Part- my favorite well, part was, of Bernardo, sorry, Ira. My no, favorite go, part, I, I want to give him credit for this, but my favorite part when Bernardo is he, after getting trucked by Shipley, which a lot of people do, uh, he came right back with that big hit on Shipley and got his get back, as the kids say. I was the very tweet- next play. Yeah, I it was, was really- because that la- the Shipley yeah. ran him over on the last play of the third quarter. Yeah, and then the and that was Shipley's only run of more than like six yard nine yards, by the way. And then um, the very first play of the fourth quarter, Bernardo speeds off the edge and knocks him down in the backfield. Yeah, it was He's got some play. what for. I was proud of him because it, yeah. it's hard to tackle Shipley, and he yeah. trucks a lot of people, and he did truck Renardo, and I was like, oh, that's a toughie. I've, I, I've been trucked. It sucks. It's a bad feeling. And so to be able to come up and get your get back is nice. And, I, yeah. and the fact that he did it right away, and he had the look in his eyes, like he was pissed. He knew that uh, that, that wasn't – that can't stand, man. <laughs> and, the you know, the d play is the play of the day without question defensively. But his stop on that third and one pass was incredible. To drop that guy for a loss was huge. Yeah, yeah, that's a big that's a big time play. It's a horrible read by the quarterback. It's not like that was called. You could tell Dabo did not call it. He's even telling them when they show Dabo after the play, we only needed one yard. Like, why are you throwing it out there? But he threw it out there because they had three wide receivers and two DBs, and Renardo Green just made the tackle. He also threw it out there because it's an RPO, and he's free to do that. But that's where a coach has to say in this situation, You're you running cannot the yes. call the pass here. So that's that's frustrating uh, for them, but they can go to hell. Uh, Garrett writes, since you all have been to the practices and have been inundated with FSU football, is it possible that you overrated the offensive line? Um, yeah, it's possible. It's possible. But I guess I would say this. I can't imagine that it's worse than it was last year. Now, Robert Scott not playing is a big deal. But when you 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 lost Gibbons, I don't think anybody thought Turnantine was incredible. And you replaced them with Roddick, Byers, and Keandre Jones. I think well, those Roddick are at least – in- Roddick has been up and down, and Byers has gotten worse every game he started. But I think Byers has got worse because he couldn't block that dude. I don't know that that means he can't block other guys. He could not He could not stay in front of that guy, and he got fired. Oh, there's no doubt yeah. that's a challenging and, matchup, but he hasn't like, played well. No, and I, and I watched uh, Yeah, I watched some of his reps today, and he did really good against Patrick Payton a couple times. I mean, you know, so it's not like he can't play. Uh, I would say this, though. I do think that one of the things that if I'm Norvell and Atkins, and he said, Norvell said they're doing this, is really looking at what, what do they do well yep. and what do they not do well through four games. And it might have been hard – 
after the BC game to, you know, going into Clemson game, let's, let's tweak some stuff going into the Clemson game. But now you have some time. Yeah. And I think they'll figure out, okay, this guy can't do this the way we thought he could. Yep. So let's see what we can do now. No, it's, it's a, it's a very good point. I, they're, they're all, it's a, it's a weird kind of a, a mix and match of what you have up front. You have some guys right. that can really run block, but struggle in pass blocking guys that can pass block that really struggle in run blocking. And, you know, we also know that um, Atkins is always talking about juggling guys and talking about cross training guys and talking about trying to find your best five. So I'm sure he's, through four games now got enough sample size, enough data points to say, okay, look, we know against the better defenses that we faced, this guy's going to struggle against this. This yeah. guy's going to excel against that. We've got to, yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them shuffle some guys. And it does depend on how healthy they get. I will say I've been worried all season long. We all have, I think, to varying degrees that they have not been able to develop over time another center option. Now, Washington can come in there and play center when they need him to, but what if they need him to play tackle? What if Washington has to be one of your answers at tackle, and now you really have nobody behind Mo? Yeah. Uh, they still don't really have a backup center, and so it's it's a little frustrating. I'm sure it's frustrating them too, but it is something to note because they really don't have another option there. But yeah, I, just, I, to clear, just to clarify, they, they have players that work there, Kayshawn Sapp. Demetri Emanuel can move there. Casey Roddick moved there. Right. But to your point, yeah, they haven't developed a strong number two. But we, we, this has not clearly been a great offensive line through four games, and I don't think it will be great, but I do think it's better than what it's shown. I think <laughs> it, the, the sum of its parts is better than what they've played so far. they just got to figure it out, and they've got to get healthy. Trey writes, would you guys rest Jordan Travis after the first touchdown against Virginia Tech to help the healing process? Could the other QBs be trusted to carry us to victory in that situation? No. So I think, and again, I'm not a doctor, guys. You may think I am, but I don't think I, I, I'm actually not a doctor. I know you need to go see one. I do. But but the, I think the fact that he was able to practice all week and play and the fact he's practicing today during a bye week makes me feel like it's something that's going to get better just with time. It doesn't need to completely – because it's not throwing shoulder. So I think he's going to get better. I, again, if it was something that rest would dramatically help it, I don't think he would have been practicing as much as he was today, and he he did everything today. So I think my point is I've talked to people that seem confident that he's going to get back to full strength, and I, I think that there are signs of that. It would be nice, though, right, Ira? I would definitely not just rest them early. Uh, no chance. Take this game seriously. Right. You just almost lost to Boston College. I know that you should beat Virginia Tech by four or five scores, but don't give your team any hint that you're not taking the game seriously. But at the same time, Get your butts out to a big lead so you can rest them. That'd be a nice that'd be a nice change of pace from the last two weeks. I don't think there's any question you'd like to get off to a good start. That's a bad, bad team. That poor program has really taken a nosedive. It's hard to imagine how bad Virginia Tech has, as a program has turned into. It's it's crazy to think about yeah. where they were. Um they, they yeah, were the I mean hard. they were the bell of the ball for yes. like four or five years there when they first came in. Yeah. yeah. And they were the other reason that you could kind of bow up. And when you talk about ACC football, you're like, all right, well, Florida state, Clemson, Miami, and Virginia tech. That's what you would always say them, but now you never bring them up at all. You, you'd much prefer to say North Carolina or yeah. something like that. Cause it's, it's just nuts to see how bad they've gotten. Eric Baker asks as it stands now, what is the hardest game left on the schedule? Good question, Eric. Uh, Ira, what do you think? There's a, there's a few choices now that this looked a lot easier on paper before the game started to get played, but now you look at the remainder of the slate for Florida State, and there are some challenges there. What do you think? Yeah, I think Duke's gonna be Duke's gonna be a good game. I don't think I don't I don't think they can beat Florida State here. Uh, Florida State plays unless Florida State plays poorly. I think Florida State's gonna win that game, but I think it'll be a good game. Um, I think. Yeah, man. On, honestly, enough. I mean, Miami obviously is better than probably we expected. Um, but I might say Florida, man, like just because it's in Gainesville, um, it's going to be the end of the year. I think Mertz, I don't, I'm not overreacting to the win over Tennessee because Tennessee's not, I don't think Tennessee's all that good. Yeah. Um, but I thought ten, Florida's offensive and defensive lines look better than I, I probably thought they were going to look And Mertz. I think has been, maybe been better than I expected. Um, so we'll see, but that game's in Gainesville, man. Like again, same thing as we talked about with Clemson. A lot of better teams lose in those stadiums, and their 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 fans are still going to be really invested. Uh, I think in the season, I don't know if I thought that was the case after they lost to Utah, yep. but now they've got that Tennessee win. If they can have a decent season, win seven or eight games, 
they'll be invested and they'll be there in that game. Yeah, both teams have uh, the meat of their schedule, as Ed says uh, there. Somebody else has said in the chat that I don't think Miami makes it to Tallahassee undefeated. If they do, Ira, that means they will have beaten Clemson and North Carolina. Miami plays Clemson and North Carolina before they come to Tallahassee. If Miami is undefeated at that point, that's the easy answer. As it right. stands as it stands now, I will guess Miami is is the most difficult game left on the schedule, but you know, before the season started, I would have thought if you get to 4 and 0, you're cruising to 11 and 1 or 12 and 0. I, I don't know that that's the case now. Uh there's a, there's a lot of parity out there in college football and Florida State is capable of playing to a level where these teams are invited into the discussion. So uh, we're waiting for that consistent dominance, but if they play below that level, then you, you might have some more moments of adversity that you've got to overcome. Okay. Carol always asks great questions. Carol, uh, let's see. Let's parse it. Good evening, gentlemen. What is one aspect of the offense and one aspect of the defense you want to see improvement upon going forward? By the way, the offense is averaging 43 points per game with only four games in even without playing well all four quarters. And yes, Ira, the Jaheim Bell factor against Clemson worked for us too. Chop on. Thank you very much, Carol. Uh, I hope to see you at an event here coming up soon. We've met Carol before now. Uh, one aspect on offense and one aspect on defense. What say you, sir? Yeah, I mean, uh, offensively, I think, well, I have two things. I mean, I, I want to see them run the ball better, but I also want to see them start using – some of the underneath stuff uh, in the passing game. Yeah. I mean, I think that's only going to make the vertical passing game better. Um, so, I, you know, those two things, I mean, just the, the running game and, and, and some of the crossing routes, things underneath to kind of uh, open up the defense a little bit. Um, as far as uh, on defense, um, I don't know. You know, I mean, I, 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 better t the tackling. It's been different things in different games. I thought the tackling was really poor mm. um, in this game. I, they had a bunch of opportunities to – get guys on the ground. Look, Will Shipley's going to break tackles. He breaks tackles against everybody they play against. He's going to probably break some tackles in the NFL. Um, but other guys broke tackles too. And and that that was not good. They they need to be better, especially on the edges and a linebacker and, and, and making this. So there's a play I didn't – Renardo Green, I mean, I'm not going to criticize Renardo Green because he's he, I think he's played fin, fantastically for most of the season. But there's a play where he's got a guy held up and then he's – trying to strip the ball by himself. And that's not how you do that. You you can hold them up till everybody else comes and then try to strip the ball, but you end up giving up another four or five yards. Those kinds of things, I just, you know, better, more sure tackling, I think is what I would want to see. Yeah, I hope to see, you know, uh, the defensive end rotation on defense have more of the stars. Like Patrick Payton was out there for 55 snaps yesterday. That's over 20 snaps that he's not on the field. If you're going to rotate guys like that, you know, like a Gilbert Edmond or, or Byron Turner specifically, he's fourth in the chart. I think Gilbert is, is definitely should be in that rotation a little bit more. A guy like that or an Omar Graham or some of the other guys that you're rotating in, you know, maybe not in the, when the game is in the balance. You know, like you want to get these guys development. But but I'd like to see the stars on the field when the game is on the line a little bit more often if it's if it's at all possible. Um, on offense, it's just about the running game, and I don't know if that means uh, that getting Robert Scott healthy and putting Bless Harris back there is is the simple solution. But there's just no rhythm, Ira, and and they're desperate to find rhythm on offense on the running game. I mean, look, your first play of overtime is an outside zone run to Jaheim Bell with Trey Benson leading the way as a blocker. Uh, Florida State, I mean, they gave the ball to Jaheim yesterday, to Trey, to Rodney, and to Lawrence. They're searching for somebody to, to take the bull by the horns, but there's also a bit of a mess up front. So I think that that's the hard part on offense is just finding who are your yeah. guys and letting them get into a rhythm maybe. 